Okay, so this is part two of replacing the Hall Effect sensor. Now, now that you have, if you have the head drum out, you can take the screw off of there and over here, and this section of the motor will pop off. Now, what I did was took a Sharpie pen and marked on each side here. I don't have to do that. But I did this so that you guys will know how to put it back in the right spot. But now the motor will come off. Now you've got a little plastic piece that you can, that basically holds the wire in place. And you can just pull up on that clip. And now the motor is free so <clears throat> your home effect sensor is right so here's your of course this is the all effect sensor right here okay this little black piece this is your hall effect sensor there's a little there's a little indentation in there it, it looks like a hole it's a little indentation so make sure you put it in the right spot but you got to unsolder the pins okay so you've got see i think this one's got uh yeah this one's actually got four four pins there's four pins so you have to unsolder these four pins and I know uh, Anthony that you wanted to do it with the drum installed in the machine unfortunately that's not going to be possible you have to be able to unsolder it and solder the new one in I mean there's no way that you can get in there to reattach um new pins to the to the old ones there's just no way okay because those pins have to go in through those holes and then you have to solder it on this side so you unsolder these four connections here unsolder them and your Hall Effect sensor will be free and you can pull it out. And of course there's holes for the leads to poke through. And then there you go. And you can re-solder it in and you have a repaired motor. Now what his motor was doing what it'll do, the signs, the, the common signs of a Hall Effect sensor that has failed is this will jerk back and forth like that. Almost, it looks like it's trying to go, but it's stuck. It'll, it'll jerk like that. This is what it'll do. It'll go back and forth like that. And it'll jerk. And it won't turn. And then you will not have a picture. So you won't have a picture on the screen and if the head's not turning you'll have sound but you will have no video and of course like i said it'll jerk back and forth like that and it'll just it'll do this it'll do this rock back and forth motion so unfortunately you have to take the head drum out and you put it right back into the same spot, okay? You won't have to do alignment on it because you're taking the whole entire drum assembly. And, you know, you're not, it's not like you're physically removing the head. Now, if you remove the upper drum and you took the head out, then, you know, you might want to do an alignment with the scope. 
But this was designed so that you could put a new set of heads in without having to do any kind of alignment because of the way it's designed. But you won't have to do any kind of alignment. Um, if your alignment is off just a hair, it's it's not going to matter because you can you can track it'll track out. But you can see where the uh tape actually rides up against the drum. You can see the angle in which the you can see the diagonal stripe that is recorded onto the tape. Now with beta the the drum itself does not move only the internal part moves so this is why it's different from vhs because vhs the upper head drum and the head moves but with beta it's a uh, stationary and it just moves inside and it protrudes through a slot in the drum that the the, the heads the scanner here's the head right here so that's the scanner assembly so anyway but yeah um you've got to take the motor off of the head drum and the only way to do that only way to do that is to take your head drum out of the machine and i know i'm sorry to bear the bad news but that's that's the way it is there's, there's just no way that you can do this with it inside the machine i mean look how tight that that space is there's no way you're going to get in there to reattach the existing the, the new leads to the existing ones there's just no way i mean there's just not enough um not enough space to do that so you do have to take the head drum out in order to do that now i believe the the one that he was showing me was the uh i think he was showing the sl uh 2710 which is the 711 b chassis which is what most of the 80s beta machines were okay but when you go to reassemble the drum you just simply Tuck your wire back in place. Okay. Clip your thing down. You put your put your motor back in. Okay. And, and then you put your you've got a washer that goes on there. And then you put this one on. Okay. So this one goes on. Then you've got another washer that goes on to here, and then the nut, okay? So that is how you do the Hall Effect device. So if you can find new old stock, just look up Hall, Hall Effect Sensor, and you'll see some pop up on eBay. Now, this one has four legs there's four leads so make sure the hall effect sensor that you're buying is the same same one make sure it looks the same and it's got to have the four legs some have three legs some of them have four and yours should look like this one where it's got four now you'll notice that on this particular one that the glue is uh, different looking now also you have some um, capacitors on the on this circuit board here sometimes they fail um, these are it looks like they're 50 volts and they are 0 0.1 microfarad and the other side it looks like they're one microfarad but when you replace the hall effect sensor it's a good idea 
to also replace these four capacitors on the circuit board because while you're in there, it's a good idea to do this. And, well, how do you uh, do that, you ask? Well, you got two small screws, one there and one there. And then this uh, circuit board will lift up and you can get to the capacitors and you can change them. So that is what you want to do. Now, the this is the washer that will go on after you put this on. Okay. So when you put this back on, let's pull that pancake thing off again. So you put your, your your motor back on, and then you got your your washer, which which goes on. Okay. Your washer goes on. You put your two screws back in. All right. And you put your your pancake motor back on. Then you put your your washer, which goes on the top here. And and you put your nut. And you put your nut on there, obviously. Now this is a uh, you don't want your your. Okay, but there you go, and uh, I have it all took it apart, so it's not going to go back on right, but I'm just doing that as a demonstration, but yeah, you, you put this back on, see this is all magnetized here, but yeah, when you put that on, then you put your your washer on and then you put this on and then you put the other washer on top and so make sure you get the right washer so it's this little thin the little thin washer is the one that goes up on top and then you put your nut on on it you see what i mean so there you go uh that is how you change the hall effect sensor and that's what happens now Sometimes you can clean the glue off, clean all that glue off, and you can get them to work again. But with my past experience, I've tried that numerous times, and it never helps. Because usually what happens is the Hall Effect sensor has already failed. That glue has already damaged the sensor and has already caused the failure. So, if you've got a beta machine and it works, take the time to take off the old glue. Because that old glue can sometimes cause the damage. Uh, it corrodes and it becomes conductive. Okay? So, <clears throat> you know, with that being said, um, you pretty well now know just exactly... Um, yeah, so you want to put, yeah, you, you don't want this stuff to be sticking to it either. It's a parts head, so I don't care, but, yeah, you go, you put, screw this back on, okay, just like that. We're gonna, let's see if we can do it one-handed. Which is not going to be easy. I don't think I'm going to be able to one-handed, guys. So, I would need both hands. But anyway, you know what I mean. You know, you put that there. 
Your, so your big washer, it's the wide, the one that's wider is the one that goes on like that. Now, what is that washer doing? All it's doing is lifting the, the pancake motor. It's basically putting a space in between so that this doesn't rub against the coil. Because if this rubs, if that rubs against the coil, you'll ruin the motor. So that is it, guys. That is how you change the Hall effect sensor uh, on one of these. So, you know, like like I said, you know, you you desolder, you remove the remove the solder, desolder the uh, pins there, pull the old sensor out, put the new one in, solder it in, put it all back together, wham bam, thank you, man, you got yourself a repaired head drum motor. Now, also, what I've done in the past is just replace the motor itself when the, the sensor fails. Um, if I don't have one in stock. If I don't have a sensor in stock and I have a spare motor that still works, that is what I will use and I'll swap the motors out. And um, you can repair it. So you can either do an actual repair by replacing the sensor or you could replace the whole entire motor with another one, you know. So um yeah. Anyway, I hope this helps you, Anthony. I know you didn't want to take the head drum out of the out of the unit, but uh, unfortunately that is the only way. The only way you're gonna be able to replace that Hall effect sensor. Because I know 100% that you're not going to be able to solder the existing, solder the new leads to the existing ones. There's just not going to be any way you can do that. Because like I said, that's way, way too close quarters to be doing that. There's no way. So you have to to take this motor off okay and you can't unscrew this motor with the drum installed you have to take the drum out and it's not hard um it's it's fairly simple uh you get into any trouble let me know and i'll walk you through it step by step so this video is for my friend anthony and it is for other people that are wanting to uh, repair this very issue. So with that being said, uh, that's going to end the video. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.